G'day folks, Rich Burtis here from Rider Days in sunny Christchurch with a quick tutorial of how to build yourself a Power Automate workflow that will allow you to receive notifications of when a task is due um, ahead of time. So say you've got a due date um, of X and you want an uh, email to be received by people that is who need to complete that task 7 days or 20 days or 30 days before that task is due and this is the workflow to show you how to do that so we're going to use SharePoint as our data source and I've got if we look here on the screen I've got a um, like a offboarding tasks example and there's due dates then here so the first thing you should always do when you're checking um, any SharePoint list is make sure you know the name the system name of your column so it may not be due date this one probably will be but to find that out basically click up into the list settings and then just go down to find your due date column it's just in case someone's renamed it um, or it's different but this and then in your URL um, what you'll see and I'll just move the browser down slightly um, in the URL that you'll get when you go into a column edit column settings right at the end field equals that's the name of the column that you want to remember so if there's a space in there you're going to have um, the different kind of x underscore zero two zero stuff that exists in SharePoint um, so that's the thing you need to remember um, so just basically make sure you use the right um, columns because we're going to use a filter in O data to be able to get to that so then you want to switch over to Power Automate and then for this example you could do a sh I would generally recommend doing a scheduled flow so daily check a library um, for um, any um, people that need to be notified um, so we'll do that um, we'll, and we'll run it like an instant but we'll set it up as a schedule um, let's do that um, due date reminders and then we're going to run it daily and then we'll do it six in the morning okay so the first things we need to do to get set up but just to put a couple of steps in so the first one to do is we need to know what the time will be in 7 or 14. We'll do that as our two examples. So 7 days time and 14 days time. And then we can use those to compare the date that the workflow runs with the date that the task is due. So to add a date um, checking field, you can write um, an expression for this. Uh, but we'll use the loco out of the box. Um, and then well, let's just do date time. If you do that, type in date time and then go to the date time section you'll see there's a whole bunch of cool easily made um, actions that you can go with and so we'll select get future time and then once you've got that on your, your screen select day and then we'll do seven for this, so seven days and then we'll rename that seven and then I will copy that and add a new step that one as well right so that one's in let's make this 14 days so 14 day and then rename that to 14 now we'll just save this and test this so I just want to show you the values that you'll get in uh, when you run this workflow because there is a bit of date manipulation that you need to do so test the flow and you'll see that you will get back the date and time right so the thing to be aware of here with SharePoint is you need to check whether your date column is a date only or is it date and time so if we go back to this due date column go back to list settings and then click on it and I can see it's a date and time column and then I scroll down through my list settings and I can see that it is a date only right so if I try and do a filter against a date with a get um, a future date action in Power Automate, it's not going to be able to do a match because it's going to look for that whole string. Um, and if this part here isn't going to match, or the T onwards isn't going to match with what I want. Okay, so we just need to adjust this get future time um, to become just this part of your date string so the year dash month dash day and so we do that with um, we're going to use a compose statement for this because you can, you can use a variable um, if you want to as well it's um, or an expression if you wanted to um, but we'll just do this um, 
just to make it easy to show you how you can use a substring. Um, <laughs> and you should actually use the substring <laughs> function in Power Automate. So the text is from get future time. The starting position is zero, and then the end position is 10. So I want a length of 10. So that's the four digits for the year, the dash, the two digits for the month, the dash, and the two digits for the day. Um, so if you could use a substring for that, um, and then for this one, I'll show you how to do it with a substring um, expression. So if I use compose for this, you get the same result. Um, but type in compose, compose, and then you want it, you don't type it here you go to the expression section and you type sub for substring select substring open brackets and I always jump back to you could type this but I'm lazy so we'll just click dynamic content and it's future time 14 that one comma and then we can see here the start index which is exactly what we're seeing up in the, the green substring but we're going to start at zero and then we're going to end at 10 and just remember to type OK so if I save and test that now, we'll see what we get back for those two values and we should see the same thing for both. This one will be seven days in the future, this will be 14 days in the future. Okay, so we basically to show you that, that value is gonna come out 27th to the 11th and then it's basically taken that part of the string and then to do it without the substring action, scroll down a bit, we get the same thing. So depending on your flavor, you want to go full low code, then use the substring function, which is nice and simple to use, um, or use the um, compose and then hand roll your activity. Okay, so the next thing, we've got these two things. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll drop in a parallel branch here, because um, then I can run them both in parallel. So if imagine I want to run this at the same time, I could go and get all my items that are due in seven days, um, and then send an email to all those folks that need to be involved, or um, I could, and then run onto the 14 days one, or I could run them both at the same time. You just gotta be aware of how many connections you're gonna call to your data source in any particular time, because you will, you are limited in how many runs you can do per minute. Um, so actually what we'll do, we'll just, we'll just pop it straight into a new step, just run vertical all the way down. So let's do get items. Get items, and then we're gonna go to um, our Power Apps, or last site collection and we're on offboarding tasks is our item offboarding tasks if I left that as it was um, then I get all of the items from my SharePoint list which I don't want to have I don't want to have hundreds of items being checked because that's going to count into my how many runs I can run a flow per day um, so let's just rename this get items space 7 and then I'm going to expand my advanced options and I'm going to put an OData filter into my um, get items request. And the way we're going to do that, we need to know the name of the column and we already worked that out before. So this is um, OData, so we're typing that in. And then I'm going to go EQ for equals, single speech mark. And then I'm going to use the substring activity and I'm going to close off that with another single speech mark. What I've found, again I've spoken about this before in other recordings, is that final speech mark tends to disappear if you're not careful, so test it, run it, and make sure that is not a reason for your flow failing. I don't know why that doesn't stick, um, but it does seem to be um, an odd one that comes along. Um, okay, so then I can do get item 7, and then I could take actions based on um, whatever comes through from this. So let's save that and see if we get any items. Cool, so it did keep it. Um, and we can see here under the run, it's gone off to the library, it's looked at it, and it's gone, show us anything with a date due of that. And then I don't see all the items yet. I could go here, if I click here, we're gonna get a whole bunch of stuff because there's a few items um, I wouldn't spend time trying to crawl through it, but I can see that I've, I've got items back, right? Um, so then I can take an action um, based on any of these activities that I've done for the items that have come back. And so let's, um, I don't know, let's send an email. All right, and so 
I want to make sure that the item is sent to the right person and so I can um, specify a column in this get items but if I didn't have a column that I want to send to say I want to send to a third party or something I could do an apply to each manually create the apply to each and make the value of the apply to each get items but what I'll do is I'll just say send an email and then the send an email here I'm going to select add dynamic content and I'm going to expand the get items so payroll match being clever but um, we're being more clever we're going to click see more and then we're going to say assigned to or task assigned to but any any value that's a um a proper um email formatted email type activity or type column um, and then that will automatically drop it into an apply to each and then i can do seven day reminder And then we'll add a dynamic content input into there. There we go. So they're just going to throw in some dynamic content, basically. So for every um, SharePoint list item that has due date in seven days in the future, uh, we're going to get an email reminder based on that. And there's maybe a few. So if we save that, okay, and test it, and then we're going to get some messages coming through, just so they know. So that chugs away. So one thing to note for get items seven there is I know this list is less than a hundred um, items. So I'll show you how to expand that to make sure you can go with bigger numbers. You can now go up to about ten thousand items within the get items section. So you just have to turn on pagination. So we found nine nine tasks that were due in seven days, and we can see here that it was sent seven day reminder and then Adele Vance. Um, Adele Vance. So it's basically the my columns but I think the title is the email rather than the title of the task but that's no need to worry about that um, so for get item 7 if I want to make sure that I'm going to be able to trawl through say a thousand items rather than a hundred go to the dot 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 ellipsis click settings expand that enable pagination turn that on and then let's just do a thousand for that I could knock that up to 10,000 if I wanted to but I know that I don't have that many um, items so this is just if you're working with larger lists um, we are still filtering um, our response back so we're getting less items back so we're not going to hit all of our um, flow runs per day um, so it's useful um, to just use this anyway but if you if you were going to do a blank get me every item check every item then I would always need to turn on pagination um, when I'm doing a smaller subset of show me just a specific value based on that date then um, I'm not I shouldn't come anywhere near hitting the threshold because I'm already filtering my results at okay so if I want to run this guy in parallel with get items 14 um, I could do the same thing and so it's exactly the same process but I'm going to add a parallel branch so I can run them side by side so that's the seven days and then we'll do get items again And that one to get items 14. Select our same list. And this time around, we're going to do the compose statement. So make sure you rename values so you can find them. Um, to date EQ dash, and then is that. Okay, close that off. Okay, and then add an action on that parallel branch where we're also going to send an email, add dynamic content, expand, see more, assign to, wait for the apply to each, and then 14. to show you can drop a dynamic content into the title of an email or subject of an email as well. Test, test, 14 days, go. And then 
and let's save that. So the main difference here is it's going to take a bit longer to run, possibly. Um, and if I've got loads of list items that I'm trawling through, then one might run quicker than the other because I may get held up in terms of how many items I can query per minute um, with the SharePoint connector. Um, but if I test that, we'll see how a parallel branch runs when we're using the two different 14 days and um, seven days. So let's run that away. Oh, error. I bet I know where it is. So this could well be the action I was talking about earlier. Yep. So we put a little dot, the sync or speech mark against that um, due date. But for whatever reason, um, Power Automate dropped it off. So that's always the first thing whenever I do a get items and I'm doing a filter, OData filter, I always check that that's possibly the issue. So we jump back in, add that back. Save. So, like, yep, nothing up the sleeves. Let's see. Test save it again just to make sure, and then we'll test it. All right, and it's run through those times that time. So, under get items 14, now we're getting things that are due on the 4th of December. And over on here, we're getting things, sorry that are due on the 27th of November. And we can see we've got nine on that side and two on that side. So we've got emails sent, 14 days, seven days. So just quickly showing how you can, um, if you know, again, if you wanted to um, change it to manual, but basically every day that's gonna run, it's gonna get future times, um, it's gonna adjust the values of those future times down to a format that the filtering of SharePoint date columns can work with um, and then it's going to get the items and if for each item it finds it's going to send an email reminder so super easy great way to bring some automation into your business uh, for reminders it's something that um, everybody asks for so I hope this helps um, in terms of building your own notifications um, keep on power automating thank you bye